Hey, what's up YouTube? Uh, currently I'm waiting for some parts for the uh, trike project. So I figured best thing to do is probably, you know, get involved with another project at the same time. That seems like the smart thing for me to do. So let me show you guys what we're working on. All right guys, so this has been a, like a dream build of mine for a long time. I've had the frame, the front end, and actually, you know, the original rear end for this car behind my shed for probably four years now. But I figured now it's time to get it out. Um, I've been inspired. Um, uh, let me go over the car and I'll kind of tell you what we're doing here. Buddy came over, helped me cut out some uh, Flintstone wheels just so I can kind of set the ride height and everything without having to actually mount the tires on the original uh, spoke wheels. What I'm gonna do with this car, it's gonna be um, suicide front end. Um, I, I'm gonna keep everything stock except for I'm gonna change the juice brakes because uh, as far as motor, picked up off of Facebook Marketplace. Once in a while, guys, you'll get some deals. And um, I jumped on this. This is a... Um, 302, supposedly out of a Mustang. But the funny thing, it was free. The guy was just giving it away. I don't know anything about it. Um, I'm going to put a balancer on it, and I need to get an oil pan. But I'm going to try to run it and just see how it is, if it smokes. This is not going to be a high-horsepower build. This is going to be a cruiser. Um, one thing that's funny, though, like I said, I got it for free. But, yeah, it's got an Edelbrock Performer on it. And I looked it up. That manifold's like 300 bucks. So that's crazy. So I have a new distributor already. I have some Ford stuff from another project I have. So that's going to go nicely with this. It's going to be a Holley. Uh, I think I have a Holley 600 or a 650. I think it's a 600 though, but I'll double check. That's going to go on this nice and simple HEI distributor. Nothing fancy. And it's going to be 200 horsepower. This is uh, <clears throat> not going to be a speed demon. I have some other cars that, you know, I have for that. Um, this, another freebie off of... Um, Marketplace. This is a 7.5 out of a 1980 Fairmont. Um, this is, uh, they actually use these in some of the early five liters. So it can definitely take the 200 horsepower. You know what they say? It's not horsepower that kills rear ends, it's traction. And these are the wheels I'm using. So really, I mean, how much traction am I getting? You know what I mean? Eventually, I might, you know, may lock the rear and maybe put like a big gear in like a 411. Um, but, you know, that's in the future. I also have a, um, a T5, which uh, is that's in the shed right now. So it's going to be, you know, deuce brakes, 302, 7.5 rear. I'm going to make the body. I'm going to make everything. I want to use as much of the original car as possible. Um, what I need to do is I want to move the rear end up a little bit closer. So it's going to be a roadster. So basically when you're sitting in the car, I want you to be able to stick your hand out the back window, you know, back to the left and almost touch the tire. That's how close I want it up front. In order for me to, to Z the rear and lay it out, I need to actually have a body. So I got a bunch of steel, um, just half inch tube. We're going to, you know, put that together and make the outline kind of of the body. And that'll give me something to hang the sheet metal to. So I am going to get that stuff unloaded from the car. And um, we're going to start building a roadster body from scratch. Wish me luck, guys. All right, guys. So another piece I wanted to bring out. Other than the wheels, the um, front end, the actual frame... I think the only, the only other uh, you know, Henry Ford steel we're going to actually be using is, I actually got this cowl a while ago. It's probably been sitting in my yard for like three years. Um, it's friggin', I mean, it's an awesome shape. And the guy also gave me along with it some uh, pieces of floorboard. So I, I'm going to have as much like the Henry Ford steel in here as possible. So, but it, the crazy thing is, I mean, this surface rust, and um, one thing that's cool, it's got the actual, the mount is still there for the, um, for the steering wheel. So that's really cool. The actual steering column. The crazy thing is, and I know I'm, uh, I'm gonna, I'm dating myself on this, but I've been with my wife for 26 years. We started dating in, I'm gonna say 98, I think it is. 
But uh, yeah, yeah, 98 or 99. I can't do all that, all those mathematicals. But when we started dating, she had a 91 Accord. And over the rear fender, it's like a known thing with those cars. Um, they were rust out. I mean, not rust, like holes in a 91. So that car was, you know, whatever, seven years old, holes in it. This is about 100 years old, surface rust, but it's beautiful. So kind of says something that, you know, 100-year-old piece of American steel is still together. So I think that's kind of cool. So next what we got to do is I'm just using, I know you guys are going to say it's bootleg, but I'm cheap. This is a budget. Um, this is just half-inch electrical conduit. I can clean off the, um, whatever, like the zinc coating on there, wherever I need to weld. And I got a bunch of 90s. And you guys have seen them, if you're watching any of the channel, I do have a pipe bender. These are perfect 90s, not my kind of 90. These are perfect, not like 89, 93. So I'm going to use this, weld it up real strong. This is just going to be the frame that the sheet metal hangs on. So it's going to be plenty strong. There'll be a ton of bracing. And like I said, all this, all this metal... Right here, and I bought a little extra. It was like 60 bucks. And um, I, if anybody's seen an actual Model A in person, there is not much to the car. Just some sheet metal, a couple braces, and uh, they sent it. So I'm going to put this stuff together. What I'm going to make first is kind of like the hoop, I'm going to call it, which is so the uh, cowl is here, that front hoop that comes back and then comes around to where the, you know, where you sit in the back. So I'm gonna make two of those, one for the top, one for the bottom, and then I'll make you know some of these braces, and then the long piece that comes back and then swoops down. Once I have that whole thing put together, nicey nice, I can see where the rear of the car is gonna sit, and then I can set, I can you know cut the frame for the Z bar, so I can move this uh, rear end all the way up. So enough jabbering, let me get to work. All right, guys. So I did a little research online, and. You can look at 20 different websites and you will get 20 different sets of dimensions for what the actual body should be. So I'm gonna get close-ish. Um, like this is gonna be a rat rod. Now, one thing I'll say about that is a lot of people will say, oh, it's a rat rod. And I think that it's, it seems that they go out of their way to like make it crappy because they say it's a rat rod, it doesn't matter or whatever, you know, half acid or whatever. This is not that. I'm gonna do this to the best of my ability and the best of my ability might be half acid, but I'm going to try to make it as nice as possible, even though it is a rat rod. If you guys want to follow an awesome channel, another one, I, I'm always plugging people. Um, I just got, I just started watching this stuff a couple days ago, and I probably watched like a thousand videos. Uh, rat Rod Bob. Dude in a shed, building amazing stuff. Stuff that like, I have to like, sometimes, some of the things, I've got to watch like two times to like, get what he did. Like, he did like a latch for his trunk. Freaking, the guy is amazing. And he built rat rods, but they look beautiful. You know, he does really cool stuff. So give him a watch. Maybe I'll try to put his, um, the YouTube name in my description so you can watch him. Guy's awesome. But I said that to say, I'm gonna do this to the best of my ability. Even though it's gonna be a rat rod, it's not gonna be perfect, but I'm actually gonna try. I think some channels, they go, oh, it's a budget, it's a budget bill, blah, blah, blah. And it seems like they go out of their way to do crappy stuff. I know you probably, if you're watching any of my trike builds, you'd be like, yeah, you're a hacker. No, that's really the best I can do. So it says something. But no more, no more talking. I'm going I'm to take the measurements, you know, ish that I got online, and I'm going to make that front tube. So it looks like from what I, what I have here, it's uh, 48 inches in the back, and the front is straight where it meets the cowl. It's about 45 inches, and from front to back, it's about 41. So... Let's see. And like I said before, I will. I'm gonna, you know, clean off all like the uh, whatever the zinc, or whatever they put on here to keep from rusting. Um, so now it says 40 in between them, but this.
little tacked up, quick and dirty, nothing fancy. Um, off camera, I'll totally weld it. And I'll probably grind down the welds just so it looks nice. For this, the, the back is 48, the front's supposed to be 45. Um, I was thinking maybe go a little bit bigger, maybe an inch bigger, and then um, kind of coat the ends to go around here. But I think what I'm gonna do is just totally weld it around the whole way, and then with the um, angle grinder, shape it, make it look nice. I mean, I'm not even sure how much of this is gonna be visible once the body's on. Like, uh, you know, say like this is the side, where it caps over the top, I like to try to use, I have a uh, bead roller, I wanna get a tipping die, and you know, kind of cut the piece of sheet metal to the door, and then use a tipping die to make it so it kind of looks over the top, and gives it like a nice finished edge. So I don't even know if you're gonna see any of this, but uh, I'll weld the whole thing around, and then I'll just grind it nice and smooth, make it look good. Nobody's gonna see it, but I'll know it's there. So like I said, I wanna try at least, you know, do my best. done all right guys full disclosure that this is the second hoop i made um this one is correct the first one i made which i just went off the dimensions i saw online uh was only off by like four and a half inches so i had to cut four and a half inches out uh put some nasty uh welds on there i'm gonna weld it all the way around but got this uh fancy jig going on right here Let's see Take guys out a little bit so you can see it. Here we go, hold on. My first day. All right. So what I did to realize it was wrong was I put the other one up to here. And when you measure from here to the other side, um, it's actually more like 42 inches. Where what I read was to make it like five feet. Not, uh, not, not five feet, I apologize. 45 inches, so it was like sticking out. And I don't think it does that in the real cars. I don't think each side sticks out like three feet, three inches. And uh, if it does, it's not gonna win this one. I want it to kind of be, you know, a nice smooth transition back. So now that I got two of those set up, I am going to uh, cut the, the pieces to make the uprights for this. So let me uh, get you guys set up in the stand. I'll cut some pieces, and then we'll kind of, you know, make this a uh, thing. All right, here's the hoops. So I want the, the side of the car. It looks like the doors. It says, you know, like I said, I'm trying to get close to what I could find online. And so what I did was actually found some people selling the doors and they actually put the dimensions so I know what it should be. It's like 23 and a 16th-ish. You know, it varies a little bit, I guess, between years. So I'm going to make... Um, I want them to be 24. I want the side of the car there to be 24 inches. So these are a half inch each. So 24 minus an inch, 23 inches. So I gotta cut four pieces, 23 inches. I'm gonna, you know, hit two in the corner, you know, one there, one there, and then back there, back there, you know, just maybe to the inside of those welds. And then uh, we have the main section of the car, and then we get to do the, uh, the little curvy bit, which will kind of be cool. So. Let me get you guys in the stand and uh, come take a ride on the struggle bus. All right, guys. All right, guys, this is what we got here. Uh, I cut the four pieces at uh, 23 inches because I want it to be 24. So, you know, look at the half inch pipe on each side. Um, it's nice and level. So what I'm going to do is just uh, hit it with one quick tack in the front. Then I can switch the level around to the other way and make sure it's good this way. Tack it back there. And then just, you know, follow up on the other four. And uh, then I can drop the other piece on and get this going. So let me get this one tacked up. And then uh, I'll bring you guys back, show you some progress. All right, guys. So I blew these four in there really quick. Um, I'm going to have to go back. And I mean, I'm welding this thing on 11. And uh, this pipe is so thin that it was funny. 
on the butt joints, you know, I didn't blow through at all. But then on these, I guess because I didn't cope them, you know, there were some spots where I had to like fill a little bit. It was um, whole city. So I'm gonna have to go back, turn the heat down on the, the welder, and maybe even use like a piece of um, my TIG rod and just kind of, uh, you know, use that as a little extra filler. I could take the whole thing, but I'm really not that good with it. <laughs> I'm not that good with MIG, but uh, I don't wanna, you know, make it worse by trying that and making the holes worse. I'll just use the uh, rod to fill it up and then I'm gonna grind them all out and uh, make them look bueno. But for now, let me try putting this piece on this piece. I think to weld it, I'm gonna stand them up and try to like, you know, somehow keep everything nice and square. Um, I used the level on each way. Those were all really good. So let me try to pop this on there and see. Just a couple hours, this is kind of, you know, turning into a thing, so it's just kind of cool. I'm excited about this. So it looks like, even though these are level, I'm gonna have to do one, and then maybe, wow. Those are good. And I know these are dead, same exact measurement up front, because I laid them on top of each other. But it looks like, uh, and these are level two, I'm surprised it's like so whack. Let's see. Oh, I see why. I think what I'm gonna have to do is maybe weld the back first, hit the back ones on first, and then um, and then hit the front. No, can't. Man, I'm good at this YouTube stuff. So, here we go. So, that's a little, uh, it's a seating area. The cowl obviously sits up here, and then I gotta make the legs to hold that. I'll do that last. Um, this is also gonna be, you know what, I'm stupid. What I should have did, but I didn't, is um, on the bottom there, I want this thing to be um, kind of sectioned so you don't see any frame. So the, the length of the thickness of the frame there was at four inches, four and a half inches. What I'll do is I'll put another rod here up that high so the whole thing will drop down. And I'll do the same thing in the back just to kind of get it up that far. But uh, this way it'll, you know, it'll sit down flush. And I got a figure too for uh, like body body bushings. I think I have some from another project or I'll go get some uh, hockey pucks. Okay, next part, which is kind of cool, which I'm looking forward to, is going to be the straight and the, the straight piece and the curve. So uh, let's get on that and take up measurements and we'll get cracking. But uh, this thing looks pretty cool. It's going to be awesome. Right? Actually, it looks like there's a body on there. You know, when the cowl's up there where it's supposed to be, and you get the back swooping where the tire's gonna be. This thing's gonna be awesome. I'm, I'm pumped. It's getting there. I know I'm not gonna be able to leave it alone, and once I do that tonight, I'm probably gonna do what I gotta do to drop it down there so you don't see the frame. It's gonna bug me. If I had a brain, if I would have put that piece up higher, but it's all right. I've got a lot of metal. All I do is put it up that many inches plus the spacer and weld the new one in there. That's all. So easy work. The same thing in the back. What I'll probably have to do there is I'll probably have to, you know, cut it up as high as I need it to go and then 90 over so it'll just slip right in nice. Nicey nice. But we're getting there. She looks good. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pleased. But uh, let's get working on the back, guys. All right, guys. So, again, the dimensions online are, like, all over the map. Um, it looks like it, it says anywhere between 35 and 39 inches from the back here where you sit to where the, uh, to where the curve comes down. 
So what I'm going to do is, um, you know, I don't want this thing to, I don't want to go on the longer side. I'd rather go a little bit shorter. It's supposed to be like, you know, roadster. So it's going to be all sporty. Um, so what I'm going to do is figure 36 inches from the back here to the, uh, the swoopy. So what I, I'm thinking about doing is maybe making them about the straight pieces 38 inches so I can get it right underneath here and, you know, clamp it to this tight. And then uh, I could stitch it up this whole way here and on the inside there. Um, and then I uh, have the long pieces coming down. So I'll set you up in the camera. We'll, uh, we'll make one swoopy together. All right, guys, how do you like this contraption? It's the only way I can come up with to really make sure that those back two are level. So, and of course, I have a four foot level, not far enough to go across. So look at the bubble right in the center. I had to put the clamp on it to then put that on it. And I just got these kind of clamped up with uh, hose clamps. Um, the only thing I need to do now before I uh, tack this thing up is um, put a level or something on it this way to make sure that these 90s are, you know, coming down straight and they're not, um, they're not cocked over or anything. So I think, I don't know if I should put a tack first down here and then try to twist that or what I should do. I think I might just take this apparatus off and uh, then try to straighten this out, just make sure that's as close as I could get it. And uh, I'll tack this side, the other side, and then I'll make a piece, well, I gotta make a long piece to go down. And then uh, from there, I need to put a piece across. That'll be the, like the bottom under where like the rear bumper would be. So let's get this, uh, let's get this tacked up. This beautiful contraption. And uh, we'll go from here. All right, guys, here's a little progress report. So, um, I saw some dimensions online, and some of them, if you look at the actual car, it looks like it comes straight back in this section here from here to here is the same width. Uh, other, other drawings, they come in a little bit. I'm only going to come in about an inch and a half. So, at first, I, I cut the piece here, and I put it in, and I was going to clamp it. But what I was worried about is if it, you know, if it bent this way more than it did on that side, it's going to be cockeyed. So what I did was this dimension, let me, from here to the other side is 46 and a half. I'm going to put this piece here, 46 and a half. So that'll lock it in. So then when I squeeze these two together to put the smaller bar in, it won't be bending at the weld. It's going to be kind of pinching on this side. And I think that gives me a better shot of it coming in even angles. So let me, uh, let me tack this up and then uh, I'll bring you guys back. All right, guys, it's the next day. And um, happy with this, not so happy with this. The mistake was I, it's going like dead straight and then a hard 90, you know, from what I saw on the internet from like here to the back is supposed to be about 36 inches, which is what I have exactly, but not straight, and then 90 down at 36. It's gotta be much more of a flow going down. So I have a solution for that. Let me set you guys up in the stand and I'll show you what I'm thinking. All right, guys, so like I said, that 90 there looks like crap. It's gotta be more of a nice sweep. So what I did was just clamp an old piece of plywood up there. And I need to find something to make a nice, nice, nice curve. So what I grabbed was garbage can. I'm just experimenting. I don't know how it's going to look, but it can't look worse than this. So we'll keep trying some different stuff until I see what I like. See, so. smaller because then that would make it more of a curve let me just uh let me put this on here this that's like right to the top i think if i had something smaller like maybe a um 
all made from like a five gallon bucket. Since it would be down further, it would be, it would be um, like a nicer suit. I have one right there, let's just see. And I think also where I put this also kind of makes somewhat of a difference. I know it needs to be this height, it's just the actual curve needs to come up a lot further. Here, like this. Hmm. I think if I move this out, that would also kind of make the, the sweep a little bigger instead of having it so far this way. Hmm. That definitely looks, I think, more like it should. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, set up my little table, unclamp that, take my jigsaw, cut that out, and then I'll have something. I'm gonna try to put it in the vise and you know, kind of just pull back and bend the pipe over it to kind of get that, that shape. See how that goes. All right, guys, ready for these shenanigans? This is my template I cut out. Um, the only thing that sucks is this table is like, I, I literally found it on the side of the road, it's aluminum. It serves its purpose, but it'd be better if I had something a little stronger for this, but we will make do. Another thing that sucks, I started bending it, it works. I gotta heat it up and go slow. I wish I had one more of these. So this way when I get it all the way here, I can clamp it over. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'll have to get a pair of gloves and um, hold it up and then use just use a C clamp to hold it and not heat the whole thing again. So this way when it relaxes, it'll be in that position. I just can't do it all in one shot. But we're getting there. This thing, I'm pretty happy. My happy face. to do is we heat it up a little bit more and then get it around and put the clamp up on this side and I think that should be pretty good and then hopefully it'll stay this tight it's like he said Not dead straight there. So I think. Alright, 
right to me is shit. I still need this clamp on. Let me take this one off. See if I can get it under, and then it'll pull over, and then I'll just keep hitting with the heat. Hopefully, it'll relax. We're the try. Compensate for like the uh, the spring back. Oh, Yassi, fire's hot. I wonder if I'll have to do the rest. Like in the vice. Maybe so. Maybe so. Let's take this out and see how it looks. I, I know it's definitely not, you know, I need this to be perpendicular. And it's not. Let's see how it looks on the uh, 
of the car. All right, so let's see. We're going to the side. Can you see that? A little better. Okay. I'm going to burn my hands a thousand more times today. But that's much more better. Much more better. Whoa. English, not much. I'm going to have to add a little piece. Hot. I'm going to have to add just a little piece. And I might need to just give it a little more of a... All right, guys, might be hard to tell from the video because <laughs> there's no sheet metal on the um, on the frame, we're going to call it. But uh, all in all, I am super happy with this. It looks really good. It looks right. Um, I think the next video on this is going to be removing the, um, the front cross member and building a uh, suicide front end. And also kind of um, Zing the rear so I can move that rear end into place. Once those things are kind of locked into where they're going to go, after that, I'm going to um, finish welding this little frame together, kind of put some uh, maybe one by two in here to you know where the doors are going to go, maybe an X across the back there. I'm going to brace it up and make it really strong so the sheet metal has a solid foundation to go on to. And then uh, from there, you know, we can start mocking up the motor, tranny, the rear end will be in place. So hopefully this one will move kind of quick because I have the majority of the stuff ready. So uh, as always, I appreciate everybody that subscribes. It means a lot to me. It helps out the channel. So um, if you're not subscribed, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. And uh, I appreciate you guys. See you soon.